Anyway, all mining sites are running smoothly. Overnight harvest totals are a bit lower than I'd like. Oh, we had some sputtering on the number 12 RCS thruster, but Jack and I managed. Oh, Jack. Good. Hold on a tick. Hera, pause recording. Acknowledged, Captain Rhodes. Morning, sunshine. And how are we feeling today? Jack, are you with me? Hera, let's go ahead and run Jack's calibration program. Acknowledged. Right. In you go, Jack. I'll see you in a few. Oh, I forgot there for a minute that I was a robot. Module D221. Manual dexterity. mining facility. I will guide you through this calibration program. First, close your hand to form a fist. Now extend your index finger. Good. To proceed, use your index finger to press the hollow button in front of you. Now reach out and grab the glowing disc that just appeared. When you are ready, Throw the disc into the goal in front of you. Oh. Target missed. Press the hollow button to recall the disc. Yes, there's a, a reason that I don't play sports Please that involve hand-eye coordination. There we go. Target hit. Excellent throw. Calibration module complete. Please stand by. Module M101. Basic motor functions. There we go. <laughs> Please pull the handle above you to exit the activation pod. This labor unit will guide you through the module. Now carefully follow it by pulling yourself through the environment using any solid surface. Please take your time and follow the guide. Now carefully pull yourself forward and release to glide to the exit. Oof. Not quite. Module complete. Module M205. Maneuvering thrusters. Your hands are equipped with maneuvering thrusters, allowing you to move more freely in zero gravity. Activate left thruster. Activate right thruster. Now please exit the activation pod and use your maneuvering thrusters to reach the door ahead. Thrusters can be used in short bursts or held down for continuous usage. Hmm. To continue. Very short bursts apparently. Let's see. The door. Now that I think about it, that should actually Please press the hollow button near the door to proceed. Make it easier though to make small adjustments. There we go. Good. Now navigate the environment using only your maneuvering thrusters. Do not grab any surfaces during this test. Very small adjustments, okay. Calibration at 50%. Okay. 
here we go. Okay, so just to take into note as I proceed, it looks like one of the tricks is to never make a motion in only one direction. Um, so you can go up and forward at the same time if you use angles, which is more efficient. Calibration module complete. There we go. Module C111, communication. System. When someone speaks to you, a reply notification may appear above your wrist. You may then respond by holding down the dialog button on either hand and selecting a reply with your index finger. Hold down the dialog button now. Input confirmed. Now hold down the dialog button and select a reply. Understood. Good. Continuing calibration. Often, you will have a limited time to select a reply. In these cases, silence is considered a viable option. Do you understand? <laughs> How long do I have to reply? Most often, you will have 10 seconds to reply. But this number may vary under special circumstances. Now exit the activation pod and move into the room ahead. Well, those are handy. You can also initiate conversations. Hello, Echo One. You are world. looking well today. If you today. look at certain people or objects okay. while you are close to them, their name will appear, and an icon will indicate that you can use the dialogue button. You may then hold down the dialogue button and select an option, just like a reply. Now start a conversation Attachment with detected. Unit and speak about the Fury transport model in this room. Can I assist you? Whoa, what? Unit 42, what is your primary directive? To assure the safety and well-being of Cross 2 station personnel. Okay. I'm going to sabotage your Fury module if you don't get out of my face. What is your secondary directive? Preserving the integrity of the telemetry corporation for compensate and equipment. Okay. What are you looking at? Positive contact. Yeah, Stay chill on. out. Please talk about the two points of interest in the room to continue. Do you need assistance? I'm going to sabotage your fury module ah. if you don't get out of my face. A Mark I Fury transport, 148th scale. Be advised, while real Fury transports can be used to travel to distant Hello locations there. across the Kronos 2 Hello. station, I do not recommend attempting Echo to Echo unit appears system. unstable no. in zero gravity. Communication system fully calibrated. Would you like to proceed to the next module? I'm ready to proceed. Acknowledged. Please stand by. Module A-131, Data Scanner. Error. Calibration program failure. Stand by for reboot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your echo unit is a perfect subject. Test runs. This is oh, come on. I'm one week from leaving. Jazz? Sorry, I have to go. Hmm. Chronos 2 out. Looks like I can't get out of here yet. Jack? What happened? My calibration program crashed. I appear to be stuck in the activation pod. That's odd. Your diagnostic programs 
never just flat out crashed before. It must have suspended the pod's release procedure. In the event of activation pod failure, Titan Protocol recommends performing a complete power cycle of the pod, followed by a level 3 inspection of... <laughs> You're set. Okay, I'm gonna get along just fine. That's how I actually deal with things also. So, here we go. Command wants you to stay here and take over my duties as station commander, so I guess this is our last week together. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Look, I So you just hit me with this news a few minutes ago. <laughs> Looks like I just came back from being in limbo for a little bit. Although if that's limbo, I wouldn't really mind spending more time there because uh it's just a Cavern of never ending stars. I'm sorry, Jack. Um, this is extremely cool that you can climb around like you have, I mean, you have no weight because you're in microgravity, but suddenly anything can be a handhold because I don't have to worry about my arms getting tired or anything like that. Oh, I think I have a message. Nope. It's gone. All right. So this is a labor unit. Looks kind of like me. Huh. Okay. Well, let's see if there's anything in there. So it says that I can report Series 8 pod. I don't know Will what I'm... Will you Series 8 labor units with you on Series? I'm sure. Okay. But fortunately, I won't need to rely on them for company with all the other <laughs> They lack my core learning modules, if that's what you mean. More to it than that, but yeah, that's more or less the gist of it. What makes me special as a robot, though? How am I different from... If it's more than just the labor processing unit of this. So I can open this pod, but it looks like I can't actually do anything with it yet. So it's probably best. Is this an emergency hatch? No. Um, okay, so it's probably best if I close the Series 8 up so that they don't float away or anything. Um, but it looks like there's something over here I that I can take a look bridge. at which is known as the jack unit. Examine jack unit, okay. Fortunately, this backup echo unit appears to be functional. Okay. I can transfer to it if necessary. That is good to know. I, I like having a, a plan B cat with nine lives type thing going on there. Um, I'll leave you closed for now though. Damaged jackpot, that's more problematic. This echo unit pod is damaged as well. If no echo unit pods are functional and my shell suffers a hardware failure, I would have to revert to an old version of my OS on the station's server. Okay, that's a bummer, but this is hilarious. Um, <laughs> it says robot break room, which there's a broken robot in this room uh, taking, taking a break, and I highly enjoy that. Um, not sure how well that kind of humor will hold up after a couple years in space though, but for now, it's great. Oh, shucks. I've ended up in the position they always tell you not to, which is that I am floating and I don't, there we go. Okay. So I have to be more careful of that one because it looks like if I just push off from something, I'm gonna end up um, not necessarily Productively moving, I guess. I should activate the bridge. Where is the bridge? Let's see. I'm gonna go this way. So. Um, there we go. Okay. 
Um, there we go. Hey! Space tourism posters. This looks just like my dorm room. Um, okay, feeling right at home, but I'm still looking for the bridge, so I probably don't need to go into the actual captain's room yet. Um, something keeps buzzing, and I can't quite tell what it is, but we'll get there. So let's see. I should activate the bridge. Yes, getting there and going. Okay, um, this hatch has a uh, blinking light inside of it, which is a little bit concerning. Um, I'll keep that in mind that hatch 13 is not openable at this point, but has something of value inside of it. Oh, oh sorry. Thanks, friend. Okay, maybe this is the bridge. Whoop. Why, hello, sir. Oh, gosh. Okay, here we go. Now I'm in the right way. Um, so yeah, before I go anywhere, I'm just going to go ahead and, and keep moving around the station a little bit and seeing what everything's like and getting my bearings so that I am not just wandering aimlessly. Um, and as I do so, I'm seeing some interesting patches. Orderus 187 and missions to Triton, Typhon, Okay, pretty sophisticated so far. Um, so, damaged hull plate over here. Looks like I've I got should some activate the bridge. Openable areas. Um, yeah, some compartments that can be opened. A maintenance mainframe door control. Something that I wanted to touch on before I move any further is that I'm really a fan of the use of storage shown here, which is, it reminds me a lot of when I look at photos of the International Space Station or whatnot, because they're using every inch, either behind closed doors in, in cupboards here, you can see there's a lot of electronics in the walls there, uh, but, but more realistically, these, these packed uh, cases of probably supplies, which is a really common theme in space station design, is to pack your supplies, uh, make sure you use all of the all of your wall space and ceiling space and floor space because you don't need to walk on it, so you can put supplies everywhere like this. And then also to be able to take the supplies. And, and what's really cool about it is to take things like especially water. Water is a great, uh, this is a great use for water, is to store it in a layer around, um, just barely inside of the, the main hull of the space station or spacecraft. And then not only are you storing your water in a, a convenient place, but it's an extra shield against uh, cosmic radiation and whatnot. So you, you kill two birds I with one stone the there. Bridge. And it looks like they're definitely using that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and Oh, shucks. Okay. Take a look at what the heck this is first. There's a swear monkey, which isn't necessarily something I've seen before, but I'll give it a Your try. Your swear count is not increased for nearly 10 hours. Congratulations. <laughs> Quit playing with that damn thing. I mean, shit. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> shit. That's fair. Um... <laughs> So uh, I'll keep that one in mind, that that's probably going to come in handy in a little bit. The swear monkey, uh, a, a slightly more sophisticated version of the swear jar, it sounds like. Let's have a chat with Olivia and see what's going on here. Um, objectives, that's what did I want. Did you say you wanted me to activate the bridge? That I did. <laughs> Towards the forward center console. How many times did you say it, though? Fair few. Okay, towards the forward console? I think this is going to be one of the most difficult parts for me of navigating this game is actually turning around. 
Um, Cause I guess I can turn around this way, but it feels like I should be able to uh, use my momentum to um, fling myself around like that. And that's not quite translating the way that I would want it to, to get to a different direction. Um, so I need to be actively gripping something to do that, which I'll figure out, but for now it's just a little, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a learning curve piece to, to find out um, how to naturally move in this kind of space and environment where uh, things are not reacting the way I expected. I should um, activate the bridge. Dedication plaque. Okay, so there's no subject yet. Um, there we go, all right. So once again, I still need to be turned around though, so I'm gonna turn. This way. Um, yeah, this actually reminds me a lot of scuba diving because when I scuba dive, you, for any, I mean, anytime you, you're underwater, not just scuba diving, but you can tell that there's a, a, a leg time to all of your actions, where if you do something, you have to wait for it to translate, um, translate through, and you also have to plan things out a lot more than you normally do when we're walking on Earth, because on Earth, in Earth-centric gravity and whatnot, it's something that we've grown up in our entire lives, or at least I'm assuming that we've grown up in our entire lives. I don't know where you're from. Um, I, I grew up in Earth gravity, so it's natural for my brain to react to that. Um, but this is a whole new ball game, figuring out how to, how to move around up here. Um, just like when you're underwater, how to move around. It's, it's so alien and it's so different that it's uh, definitely taking a lot of conscious effort to get places. Ah. Transitioning to daytime cycle. Pretty sure that's what uh, Olivia wanted me to do all along. So let's uh, turn around and take a look at that. I'm really going to miss this oh, park. cool. I'll get started on the morning checklist in a bit. Just, just give me a moment to soak in this view. Okay, so these are take our your time. chairs. That is a great view. I wonder if I can get closer. Wow. So it looks like up there we've got some storage pods, likely of space mined materials. Um, and we're, we're in the rings of Saturn. I see that we're one of the largest ships out here right now. Uh, and, and as is commonly theorized, the rings appear to be made out of layers of, of, of small, well, varying size fragments of rock. Um, and, and gaseous uh, clouds as well. Makes it a great place to be doing asteroid mining and whatnot, because uh, you've got this large concentration of free floating, <sighs> well sized uh, rocks. So I'm a fan of, of the setup we have going on. Um, Nate. All right, Nate, let's see what you've got to say. Gina, the port dino. Oh, floating away. Are you going to leave these behind? Aw, no. I hadn't really thought about it. Why oh, no. do you want to keep them? And what purpose would I have for toy dinosaurs? Something to remember me by? You forget my memory is archived. I can remember you anytime I wish. Suit yourself. You won't be the same. Oh no. Okay, so, hmm. I've heard of this happening before with people who have gone to space is that it takes a couple days, um, sometimes longer, to get used to the fact that anytime you put stuff down, it floats away unless it's strapped in somehow. Although I never thought that the first time that I went to space, my biggest problem with free floating items would be uh, dinosaurs. But I have to say that I am not disappointed that it is. Uh, as far as space problems go, 
dinosaurs are one of the more dramatic ones to have. Those congratulations um, are in order. Actually, for what? Well, the operation. There's really no need for that. Come on now, it's a big deal. In a few days, you'll be Captain Jack. So, congratulations, Captain Jack. <laughs> what I mean is, as an Echo unit, I hold no official rank. So, technically, I can't be promoted. Right. Well, that's too bad. Captain Jack has quite the ring to it. Also, you are the only person who calls me Jack. To everyone else, I am merely Echo One. Is that your way of saying you're going to miss me? Mm -hmm. I have no... Oh! What was that? Something Jack, just shorted out, that? so we're gonna have to. Um, what the hell? Wow. Yeah, we're having major problems now. That's a an anomaly that. Please tell me you can see we that. We can't uh, ignore. What are we seeing? There's something out there. I can't quite make it out. I need to get closer. Okay. Let's get a little bit closer over here. Okay, so yeah, I'm seeing something in the distance. It looks like it's unknown, is what it's coming up as, but it's a. Uh, red triangle or a red uh, square that's out there. Um, man. So if I report. Jack, I'm seeing something out the front window. Unknown. Can you come up here and confirm? Yep. Affirmative. I see it. Any idea what, what it is? is? That? I'm afraid not. There are no records of any such phenomenon in the Atlas Interplanetary Database. It is an anomaly. That's an anomaly for sure. Okay. Jack, are you all right? Okay. I can't reach the dialogue box. There we go. Never mind me. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. It's crazy. Whatever that was, it looks to only have affected the electronics. Are you sure you're okay? Minor glitches. No permanent damage. Liv, it's possible that anomaly is not entirely stable. You think? <laughs> Priority alert. The hollow table. Something's wrong. So I've just been I'll investigate. told that the anomaly that we've experienced Hera, is not uh, stable, which I'm not surprised, orders. seeing as it just tried to blow us up with what seems to be a large um, spherical disk of a energy beam. Uh, although from what I can see, I can't quite tell if the anomaly is on the surface of, of the planet or if it's uh, uh, on, the, on the outer edges of the atmosphere. I would, I would guess probably on the outer edges of the atmosphere. But for now, I think that I need to go check in on the electronic systems that we have here. Um, if I can find them, wouldn't that be great? So let's see. Let's see if she has any uh, advice for me. Should we report the disturbance to command? Hmm. No, not yet. First, let's get a handle on the situation. Fire up the hollow table and let's get a sit rep. Okay. Fire up the hollow table. Okay, I saw the hollow table back this way. Um, so I'm just going to keep trying to make my way back towards what looks to be the hollow table. Uh, a, a good knowledge point there is that the objective seems to have a that, that red square that I mentioned earlier, which was floating over the anomaly, is now floating over the hollow table, and it shows information when I get closer. So that's a great way to realize where, where your objective actually is in this game. Um, I think to activate it, it says priority one alert, system scan in process. I want to activate Hera, that. Status report. Multiple tier one malfunctions detected. That Isolate should... and identify. Acknowledged. Isolating. That should give me more Awaiting information input. about what we're seeing with this anomaly and what kind of effects it's had on on our spacecraft so far. Because um, we can't ignore something like that, especially when it's affecting the electronic systems that particularly my human crewmates need. Um, could be a very serious malfunction. So excavation zone data. Kronos, Captain Lawrence Hood. Shipment has been delayed. Okay. So active Saturn zone orbital zone beta. beta. 
Orbital Mining Facility. Designation, Kronos 2. An echo unit. I thought you would be taller. Kronos 2 Mining Platform. Central Mining Station. Primary cargo, helium-3 isotope. Throughput 800 tons of water ice per revolution. Payload 300 tons. Hmm. Okay. Malfunctions isolated. So oh, perfect. Right. This is exactly what I was Perhaps looking for, though. Perhaps it's not as bad as it looks. Um, Ground fault recorded in the cargo bay. So... Possible circuit overload. Reading marked temperature increase in the core containment chamber. Lockdown procedures in effect. Power failure reported in primary oxygen garden. Emergency failsafes triggered. Uh, what, that's it? That's all we've got to go on? <laughs> Hera, can you give us an in-depth scan of each affected area? Negative. Unable to establish communication with cube satellites. Wait, we lost the cube sats? What? How the hell did we... Oh, forget it. Let's just have a look for ourselves. Where are you? Okay, so we've lost communication ah, with our CubeSats, but I'm pretty sure that what I saw earlier, yep, was an extra CubeSat. So that was the, the blinking object that I noted at the very beginning, which my partner Stand Olivia by. has gone It'll and gotten. Um, and we should have put in there pretty quickly. Um, Awaiting manual input for calibration. So, perfect. Module A, 131, data scanner. So now I'm going to go ahead and calibrate this new CubeSat so that we have more information about, uh... The scanning tool allows you to collect data on anything in the environment. So I can get more Please information about what's going on with the damaged areas without having to have an actual uh, EVA or extravehicular activity, which is what it's called when we send Please astronauts out into, uh, spacewalks outside of the spacecraft. Um, those are dangerous, they're uh, time-consuming, and they take a while to get set up, so they're not scanner. our primary method of looking into things. It's, it's much better to use uh, human-robotics partnerships to be able to do this. Alright, i scan. After scanning something, its name will appear next to your hand okay. on the scanner's data tab. To see the results of your scan, grasp the tab and pull it away from your hand. Pull the data tab now. Oh. Excellent. Use the button on top of your hand to deactivate the scanner now. Good. Cool. To complete this module, gather scan data on five other materials or objects. Okay, so it looks like what I have to do here in order to use these these CubeSats and have them activated is that I go and I, I activate this and it, it shows me what you the scan, scan has. Yes, hold this on. Um, and then it can, it can show me more data about what it is I've just scanned. So I'm going to put that down under the item, which looks like a, a disk of some sort. And uh, I'm going to... Wait. Ah, I need to activate this on my hand first. It's my scanner, and then target that, grab, pull out. You must scan additional objects or materials to complete this calibration. Okay, so I need to go and find somewhere else to scan something. I feel like can't keep scanning the same one. Although, it doesn't appear that there are others to scan in the area. It's a frisbee, so I'm gonna just leave that where I started. I wonder if I put this somewhere else. It'll... Four scans remaining. Hmm. Okay, so let's put that down. Let's turn the scanner off for a little bit. Where else am I supposed to be scanning is the question. If I go back around this way. Um, you must scan additional objects or materials to complete this calibration module. Let's see if I put that up back on. This is my scanner. Three scans remaining. Okay, so I can scan. It doesn't just have to be 
items like that where they look like they have a scanning pad on them. I can actually scan anything in here, um, in which case I'm going to go ahead and go back this way and I'm going to scan this one. And I'm going to scan this one. Two scans remaining. Scan the floor. One scan remaining. Okay, so I think I have one more scan that I need to get. So it looks like I actually can't scan anything in my activation pod. Probably it's a transitory item. Um, so if I go over here, I've already scanned one wall, but maybe it'll let me scan again. Calibration module complete. Yep. Please stand by. All right, good. So it looks like it's going to send me back to the, the actual game now that I've learned how to All set. use Scanner the fully calibrated. scanners up? and whatnot. OK, watch out. Good. So we've give that cube sat a scan. Deployed so our cube sat, and now I'm going to use the skills I just learned to figure that out. It looks like the cube scat is offline because uh, well, it doesn't give a reason why it's offline, but it does tell me that the thrusters are still reactive, the gyroscope is still reactive, so it's capable of maneuvering. Uh, the sensors are offline, which is probably the main issue that we're having here is that even though it can maneuver, it doesn't know where it should or is maneuvering. Um, oh, looks like I have more information if I scroll on this. Um, okay, so let's take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's just more more information about the CubeSat. Basically what I just said, uh, which is that it doesn't seem to be navigation that's affected, but rather so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at the cube scat set again and see if there's anything that I can, uh, anything more that I can get from that. Nope, so that's the same information I was getting before. I'm going to go ahead and turn my scanner off and then See what else I can. Oh no, okay. Let's see. If I push this button. Mm hmm. Okay, so. Oh man, see, space is hard. Space is hard to travel in. Let's try and, hmm. All right, here we go, take two. This is why it would have been nice if I could have waited a couple days until we had our first anomaly so that I could figure out, get my bearings in space, but we don't control when stuff happens. It just happens. So let's see if I can get anything new from this now by looking at it more. Um, I'm gonna talk to Olivia again and see what she knows. She has no dialogue, that's a bummer. Okay, so that's not the scanning system that I was hoping that it would be. Um, I want to take a look at the item that's down here. System locked. Access for authorized use at this time. Um, okay, so I can't use that. Uh, one 
probably not. I'm not sure what what I should be doing with that if it's not working. So I'm gonna go check in with this labor unit over here. Do you require assistance, Echo One? And see if he knows anything. They forget that detected. gender neutral terms for robots are important. Um, hello friend. What can you tell Can I us? assist you? Hmm. Minor body impact ah. detected. Ah. Damage assessment negligible. Okay, so that's not helpful. Let's see if there's anything else. Okay, so I'm gonna um, try and not get distracted by the very clear view of the stars that we have going on outside and move past this area to go look at some of the stuff that's over here and hopefully grab that disc and see what I can do with it. Um, which I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing with this, but it's an Echo Arena disc. Examine sample. Report arena disk. So it doesn't seem like I get to. Hmm. So I don't have anything that I can actually do with that right now. I'm going to try throwing it. Okay. So it throws well, but that's about it. Let's check this monitor over here then. Mainframe is still locked. It's a positive. I'm gonna go back to the front of the ship and uh, double check what I've got going on over here, see if there's any more information that I can use. Um, nope, so far it looks like that screen is locked. That screen is locked. Here we go. So I'm gonna grab the pad over here, even though I think it's our, yeah, it's our daily checklist. So that's not necessary right now. Um, I wonder if it has some kind of magnet on it though, because it looks like it's sticking to the base pretty well. I'm not seeing any subjects for dialogue up. What's this? Okay, so it says BSL. <sighs> Gonna give that another go. To oh, it's just a water bottle. It's unimportant at the moment. Um, okay, so I'm gonna head back to where Olivia is and see. Echo unit identified. What? If we can give this another another round. Still no subject for dialogue in either of those. Um, still don't know what to do with the cube set. I don't seem to actually be able to interact with it in any way except holding it. <sighs> I'm floating. <sighs> okay, so. I wonder if I were to bring this to one of the outer doors, if I could put it outside or if the labor unit knows anything about what I could do with this. Maybe they can fix it. Speak to the labor unit. Nope. So I can't talk to the labor unit right now. Um, so I'm going to wait until I get somewhere I can move again and then maybe try to find my way outside to throw this cube set somewhere where it can give me usable data about what's out there. See, this looks promising as far as monitors go. What do you say? All right, let's put you down. Just... All right, so you're a locked system. That's great. Um, let's put that there for now and just let it float away. Let's talk to Hera and see if she has anything to say. So it seems like... 
Oops, I hit the resume button, or the mis oh, by mistake, there we go. Now I just am right back into it. Um, let's see. Hmm. So right now I'm still trying to figure out what my mission, I guess you would say right now is to, uh, I'm assuming that it has to do with fixing some of the damage that's been done to the station. So I'm going to look at this automated collision avoidance system and uh, there is nothing that I can actually do with that because it is locked like the rest of the systems. So this is indicating that it probably has to do with the CubeSat that was on the hollow table, which I still am not quite sure what to uh, do with that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to grab the CubeSat again and just take another look at it because my only other option at this point seems to be to run around and check all of the, ouch, all of the um, various different sensors that we have uh, giving information in here, which isn't the most logical. However, oh, this actually looks like it might have something going on in here that I wonder if, um, this will help me fix the CubeSat in any way. Okay, let's try that again. If I put that down right there and hope it stays relatively near. I'm gonna open this and it looks like I have a multi-purpose tool of some sort. I wonder if there's some way that I can Yep, I just keep hitting the button that mean, makes me have to, uh, the, the pause button, which is, I think, a hand placement issue, but we'll put that back for now. Close the drawer, see what's in this one. Okay, so we've got a variety of tools down here. Um, but the question is, are any of these going to be helpful? That looks like it's a cuff portion for what the part of the robot that's being built here. Um, hydraulics of some sort. <sighs> Note to self, shelves make for a very bad grip in space. Um, but those seem to be locked in pretty well, so I'm gonna Grab the cube set again. And keep moving around and looking at stuff and seeing if it's possible that I can, if I open that. Okay, well that's not helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead back up here and make sure to close that up. Go to that one. I think that that would be the same result if I open any more of these pods. They're probably not going to be super useful. However, it looks like there's a door control over here. And if that'll let me open up, that might be central concourse to zone two. Uh, I do not have the capacity to open right now, so I'm going to keep going. See what else there is around here. Emergency tools of some sort, okay. Um, another labor unit. Don't need that. So let's see what's on this side. Equipment. All right. So I'm not seeing anything of use in this area of the space station. So I'm gonna head back to the other side. Huh. Okay. So those are just locking mechanisms and whatnot. There we go. Um, 
So I want to make sure that I see where I'm looking before I... scared of that. Um, Alright, so I'm almost back to where I started with this. I'm gonna gently put that down. Hopefully it stays. Alright, that's still locked, so... Ah, shucks. There we go. Okay, so if I put that back... And... Dialogue there. Okay, so back in the day before I went to space at one of my first legit jobs, which was working at a lab, I used to um, the first couple days that I was there, the, the piece of advice that I was given was to familiarize myself with everything that we had at our disposal in the lab and where it was and whatnot. And I've done some of that so far by looking around and pressing buttons and seeing stuff. But uh, I've been hoping to finish once this anomaly was dealt with, but seeing as it doesn't seem to be dealt with right now, I'm going to keep doing that and see if I find anything that's uh, important for helping me with this, so um, just starting in a overall sweep of the area once I get turned around. Um, so I've looked at most of this stuff in here. Optical feed, those are the same screens, just in a different location. Right, so I'm gonna keep, uh, keep moving around, seeing what I've got at my disposal here. That's not anything important, so I'll put that right there now. Close out valves. Yep. Not seeing anything of importance, although there is this piece of damaged hull, which I wonder if there's the capacity for that to be useful at some point in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this and say examine hull plate, which doesn't seem to be an action I can take at this point, which is a bummer, and there's no way to open that. So I guess right now is not the time to worry about the hull plate. And instead, I'm going to just keep Use that to launch myself off. Keep looking around. I want to know what the screen does. Mainframe again. Um, okay, so let's see what, what we've got in here. This is the rest of the hollow projector. I'm very familiar with that at this point. Um, Command unit in proximity. Yep, yeah, that's me. Hello, labor unit. Still can't speak to you. Must not be part of what my mission is right now. I wonder if I can pull this. Okay. So... I've looked around most of this room, so at this point I'm going to see if there's any way that I can enter this one. Nope, it's locked, okay. And that belongs to the captain. 
I want to see what this floating bit is over here. Um, looks like I've got... It's a Hathor Geosystems. Uh, that's not useful until we go somewhere. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so I've actually already spent a lot of time in here. It's good to know that even though we're about a hundred years in the future, we're using the same standardized tabs for uh, communicating dangerous information regarding flammability and chemical composition and whatnot. Um, that's just good to see. Although at this point I probably should be focused more on the problem at hand than the safety features. Um, so I'm missing something here. There's definitely something that I'm missing and I'm gonna go back to where it seemed to be and just look at this again and try pressing buttons on every part of it that I can and make sure that there's nothing here that I can actually interact with in a more physical manner. Um, okay, so with that said, that doesn't seem to be doing anything helpful. I'm going to take a closer look at the hologram scan of it. Not seeing anything new there. So what I know about this is that the scan exposed IO port, active wireless IO port, hmm. That does not help me. I seem to be very much in a pickle here. Um, there are no subjects for dialogue. There's no actions that I can take. Yep. Um. There's something about the CubeSat though that's important. Um. Oh, I wonder if I put that down and go ahead and scan this. Scan complete. Right. Well, what's the story? According to these readings, there we go. something was disrupting the CubeSat's ability to communicate with the rest of the sensor network. Was? My scanner appears to have reset the CubeSat's transmitters and restored the connection. Oh, well, problem solved. All you have to do is find and scan every last CubeSat we have scattered <laughs> across the entire facility. Sounds like fun. Oh, of course, it would to you. I'll send an objective to your ARM computer, but consider it low priority for now. Objective received. Right then, on to the real problems. What do you think? What's next? Okay, so what I know now is that what I had to do in order to get past that portion was to scan the CubeSat, and when I scanned the CubeSat, something about that reset well, it. Um, the anomaly is likely to take so now we're talking about what we're gonna in do the meantime, next. we might as well get started on those repairs. Pardon? Yeah, start wrapping up. I need okay. a few minutes to pull today's command codes off my console. Gotcha. You can just keep yourself occupied till then, I'm sure. Of course. So it looks like I've got a couple new objectives right now, which look like meat live in the activation chamber, in the activation bay, and inform live when you're ready to begin repairs. That can wait for now. Um, and my other, my other one is finding all of the CubeSats scattered around the base and repairing them the same way that I did the last one. So. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the bay where I'm supposed to meet Liv, and then that's probably a good point to take a break for now once I get in there. Oh, this is a new part of the ship that I haven't gotten a chance to see yet. 
So we've got seashells in here, just various of those. Not sure if they're decorative or purposeful, but I'm gonna go ahead and go over here. Oh, this is where we store the exercise equipment. Um, in theory, I think that this is probably where I should be for the next section of the game. So, man, I'm just feeling a lot of parallels here to my own workplace, my, my, my astrobio lab, because we always play classical music there also. And so when I'm hearing this, it's, it's <laughs> sending me right back there. Um, but as much as I would love to keep going with this, since I've completed the objective that I was going for before and I'm about to start on a new one, I'm gonna call this a break point and probably uh, X out of the game for a little bit. Um, okay, Jack, I'm all set. Yeah, gotta get out Let me before, know when you're ready to get started. before Olivia keeps trying to get me started on that. But next time I come back, I wanna take a look at all of these cool doodads that we've got in here, uh, for sure. All right, so here we go, headed out.